two and a half years of genocide, war crimes and aggression that has resulted in the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people. Not a day goes by that Russian missiles and bombs don't fall on Ukrainian cities. Despite this, Russia still sits on one of the world's most important councils, which years ago was supposed to be a guarantor of stability and peace, the United Nations Security Council, today a completely impotent caricature of the idea on which its founding was based. A permanent seat on this Security Council is not a privilege, it is a responsibility, a grave responsibility bestowed on only five nations to be the guardians of world peace. Today, some of these members are not living up to their responsibility. This seemingly obvious remark falls here for the third time. In February 2022, Russia being a permanent member of the Council trampled on essentially all of its basic principles. Nonetheless, the Russian ambassador still sits at the table. To cite examples of lies and manipulations of the Russian representative on the Council, it is a waste of time and attention. It's a repetition of Kremlin propaganda that has nothing to do with reality. What is puzzling, however, is the self-confidence of the Russian representative at the United Nations, as if they know that no one will move them from here. From Gaza to Ukraine to Sudan and beyond, wars grind on, suffering grows, anger deepens, lives are appended, and the legitimacy and effectiveness of the United Nations and this Council are undermined. Because the Council has essentially become a body without decision-making power. Resolutions, recommendations, attempt to build peacekeeping missions, everything is torpedoed by Russia's veto, sometimes with China's complicity. The whole institution has become such a dummy. It has become an instrument that is super unspectacular from the point of view of world peace and very effective from the point of view of individual powers. Security Council reform would have to mean the possibility of removing a permanent member in the event of a violation of international law. The need for United Nations reform was explicitly mentioned by the Polish president. Many political interests intertwine and collide. Therefore, reforming such an organization is not easy, but a summit for the future serves to show how the United Nations should prepare and respond to challenges. Moreover, such a reform of the Council may not necessarily be to the liking of not only China and Russia, but also the United States or the United Kingdom. There is no shortage of examples in recent history of Washington's rather clear-cut violations of international law, such as the invasion of Iraq, which could not be explained by self-defense, and Iraq's weapons of mass destruction turned out to be an intelligence lie to justify the attack on Hussein's regime.